as an individual in their mid 30s who's never run before in their life, I decided to give running a go last year. Let me share with you uh, all the mistakes I've made and what I learned after running my first virtual half marathon one year after starting. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I wanna give you my honest impression of what it was like my first year running with zero prior experience. Now, before this, I considered myself an avid cyclist, but what that really meant was I only went out, you know, when the weather was like nice and uh, during the summer and stuff like that. And prior to 12 months ago, I had never run a day in my life. How this all started, a buddy of mine decided he wanted to sign up for this gravel cycle race up in the Adirondack Mountains. And he sent a text out to the group saying, hey, does anyone want to join me? And uh, I immediately thought, hell no. But then I thought a little bit more and I thought, you know what? I need a challenge. I need something to get me off my ass this winter. And when March started to roll around, the weather was nicer. I thought, it's still a little too cold out for cycling, but what if I tried running? And that's when the problem started. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll lead you on to my first mistake when I went out running. I had no idea what running was. I thought it meant going as fast as you could down the street and, um, you know, over time you just get faster and faster. And I basically thought it was like sprinting. So what this did was cause me to injure myself because I was running way too hard, way too long, and my body was not used to that kind of punishment. The best advice my friends gave me when I first started running was to limit my runs to only about 20 minutes per run or maximum of three kilometers and only run twice a week. What this did was minimize the amount of damage I could do to myself. At the same time, I uh, gave myself more time to recover. Of course, my shins still hurt really bad, but not as bad as running every other day or running every day. So with that advice, I slowed my runs down, I shortened the duration I was going out for, and I only did about two runs a week for the first few weeks. And that helped so much. I, it increased the number of recovery days, my body was feeling much better, I was still really sore, but you know that was gonna happen anyway. And part of that, I decided to, for the recovery side, I invested in one of those massage guns. That was a, a, an absolute lifesaver because that delayed onset muscle soreness in your calves and your, your shins, Man, that really sucks. That's when I came out of my second problem. I was still running for what I would consider pace, right? I was always looking at pace. That's what Strava shows, you know, when I post my runs on there. It's my Apple Watch was showing and it kind of distracted me from what I should have been doing, which was not running for pace, but running in a certain heart rate zone and at a certain cadence. So cadence is just like the number of steps you take per minute. And after a buddy of mine saw a couple runs I posted on Strava, he said, you know, your cadence is a little low. Maybe you should try and increase that. And the reason he mentioned doing this was because a higher cadence means less contact time with the ground. So you're not kind of slamming your feet into the ground. And this is better for your joints and less prone to injury. So I wanted to get my cadence up to about 160 steps per minute. Another great channel, Triathlon Terran. He recommends doing a lot of zone two training, which is a lower heart rate zone. So I would train at between say like 130 to like 140 beats per minute. So trying to keep it really low, almost painfully slow. All right, so this was great. I had a basic running plan to build up my base cardio endurance, doing these longer, slower runs. And then, you know, we're kind of coming into about like midsummer at this point, so it's get a little hotter. And I realized that I don't have all quite the right gear. The best part about running is all you need is a good pair of shoes to get going, and shorts, and sunglasses, earphones for music, well, and a sweatband, sunscreen, and for longer runs, you'll need a hydration pack. Also, don't forget your nut butter and blister bandages for your feet. Oh, also uh, electrolyte pills and energy cubes for longer runs. All right, I guess it's a little bit more than I thought. I ran all summer with not a lot of problems, but I wasn't sure I could keep up that same training regimen in the bitter, cold, upstate New York winters. So I got a couple more pieces of gear to add to my kit, a nice lightweight running jacket, running tights, of course, a good pair of running gloves and hat. The best way to keep my motivation up was to find other people to motivate me. So I got on Strava, I was posting all of my runs. I went out when it was safe to do so running with partners. 
I also did a lot of cross training, so doing things like cycling, which I've already been doing. And then I added in some upper body workouts, strength training. I did some HIT classes online. And I even did some more yoga and things like that to you know break up my training routine to keep things kind of interesting. So what was it like to run my first half marathon with only one year experience running? Well, the first half went really well. Halfway mark complete. Still feeling pretty strong. 10 and a half kilometers to go. And after that, not so much. So after about 15 kilometers or so, my pace started dropping off pretty, pretty terribly. Uh, I was becoming fatigued and for whatever reason, I couldn't get my heart rate above about 150 beats per minute. I, I had planned to do between 160, 170 and I wanted to stay in that the whole time, but that didn't end up happening. But I ended up pulling off, I think a decent time. I was pretty happy with it. A two hour, 35 minute, which is just about 12 minutes a mile. I'm gonna definitely do it again and work to improve that. But in the meantime, I realize I still need to build up my base endurance a little bit longer. So in terms of what's next, there's so much more I need to learn about running. I'm still a heel foot striker, which is not great. My form is still pretty terrible. I sometimes have this weird lean when I'm running. So there's a lot I still have to learn. What do you guys think? Any experienced runners out there watching this video with advice for me that they wish they'd known when they started running? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, thanks again for watching.